Okay, so now that I've set up the uh, the resolution at 350 pixels per inch and the size at a, a minimum size for my actual image of 10 inches, now's a good time, and I've grown my canvas size to 30 by 40 inches, so I have space to work. It's a good time to save it. So I'm gonna click on File, Save as PSD. And then I'm gonna to go to my downloads. One downside of the browser-based is that it will save, but it won't allow you to rename it within the program. So it saves it as a PSD, but it's gonna be whatever the, the name of, of my sketch was, right? But this is no longer my sketch. So I'm gonna take that photo that Photoshop document, that PSD document, and I'm going to rename it. So it's FA20 Carl Assignment 1, and I don't need Sketch anymore. Now it's a composite. And this is going to be much, much bigger in terms of its pixel resolution than my Sketch, right? We want to make sure we have high resolutions here. Change the file format? You don't change the file format, I'm just changing the name. So I saved it as a PSD, and then I just renamed it. That way it won't overwrite my sketch. And I'll just keep it in downloads for now. And then I'm going to close it in PhotoP. And I'm going to open it again with the new name. Right. So now it's in downloads. And I'll move it into my, my assignment one folder soon. And there it is. All right. Why did I do that? Well, it's so that now every time I hit save as a PSD, it will have the correct name for it. And a lot of you might have had your file just named after whatever your camera phone gave it. So you always want to put your own name in it and some description of it. So if it gets misplaced on your computer, you can find it. Now these raster files can be quite large, but we need them to be so that they can print well. But of course that means that it's pretty hard on the computer. So I'm going to close my other applications. We're supposed to rasterize the image, right? Yes, you want to rasterize your sketch so you can resize it. So I'm going to close some of these programs I'm not using. Hopefully that will help everything run a little bit more smoothly. Even though I have a fairly powerful computer, we're asking a lot of this browser-based program. We're asking it to remember a whole lot of pixels and a whole lot of history. And of course, my computer, I'm also recording it both <laughs> through a screencast recorder and through Zoom for the class. So these are not unusual things. Hmm. So it's got the right name, but I don't have my image. So they know exactly where the image should go. Very odd. I'm going to try reloading the site. I probably have too many tabs open, too. So remember that your computer only has kind of a limited amount of running memory. No matter how big its hard drive is, it has a limited amount of processing memory. So you want to focus that where you need it. That's weird. If I have any other programs. Oh, 
I'll do it. Hmm. Same issue. So this gives me an opportunity to show you another way to do it. And there's always new ways to do it. So let's pretend that this is just a new file. I'm just going to say new project. I have my sketch, but I'm going to create a new project. I created a new file in photo P that is 350 pixels per inch. That is 10 inches tall by more inches than I need wide. And what I'll do is open and place my original sketch, just my low quality JPEG sketch. So that's on my desktop in my digital art folder. But it is important to try to get this right. So notice that my sketch is not big enough resolution because this, I want to resize it just like we did with our exercises using the transform box and the tools. Hold down shift and have it fill the space. And then I can crop it down. And you can see that makes the computer create a lot of new pixels. And if I need to grow it more, I can hit Command minus and shrink. All right, now I hit return and it will process that. So it's gonna grow all those pixels. And now I can use the crop tool and cut it off at the edges. And now if I check under image size, image, image size, it will show me the dimensions, right? Not in pixels, I want inches. So it's 10.43 inches, which is fine. It has the height, as long as it's at least 10, by 14.51 inches wide, by 350 DPI. So that's all good. Now, <laughs> so I'm just checking that. It's the right size. Now any pixels I bring into it from reference will be large enough to print. I won't artificially be shrinking them. And if I have to make them larger to fit within this and they look really blurry, then my reference isn't a high enough resolution. I'm gonna quickly draw a little binding box around it using the guides. And of course this can change. I can decide to add more sky later or I can decide to shrink the, the landscape a little bit later, depending on my reference. But this is the plan I'm going with. And now we get to have some fun using other people's pixels to make our vision a reality. So now I'm going to go to image canvas size, and I'm going to give myself more space to work and go to inches, and change it to 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. It doesn't ask me about DPI because it will just keep the native DPI that's already there, which is 350. And it will grow all this space around it, but my binding box is still there. Okay, now I can go to my references. And I'm going to bring them in, going from the background forward. 
So what's my furthest back reference? It's the sky. It's this background Milky Way, number five. So I'm going to bring that in first. Right here. Drag and drop it in. It's amazing that uh, that works for Photopea, just like it does for Photoshop. It really is an impressive, bro impressive program. Wait, for mine, I don't see all the little um, squares, like the checkerboard. I don't see that. If you just have white, that's fine. That's just because you kept it as a background layer. Oh, I'm getting this for the first time. I've never seen yeah, that before. I see. Yeah, I see what I'm saying. It crashes on you. All right. Okay, that's a crash. That's because it has bad processing power, right? It is because it's browser-based. And it's because I'm overtaxing the computer a little bit. You can hear it working. I made my thing uh, 350 pixels per inch, and it just turned my entire thing black. Huh. <laughs> so were you doing canvas size when it turned black? Or image size? Excuse me. Sorry. Um, I was doing image size. OK. And it turned black instead of just like mine is right now, just disappearing. All right. Now it's trying to crash. Okay. So I think this is good. We're learning. Vectors. I think we're going to have to, to make what we would usually do at print resolution. We're going to have to make it at screen resolution so that I can show you all the, the tricks and things. And if you're using Photoshop, you want to use 350 pixels per inch, but I don't want to have to teach you in something that you're not all able to use. So I'm going to keep teaching you in Photopea, but we're, going to, we're just going to make that simple change. It's all going to look good on screen. It's just not going to be able to print as large. So for the reasons you see, <laughs> because we don't want to keep crashing this program. That's not a good use of our time. My image is also coming out like 42 inches by 56 inches. So that's pretty big. <laughs> but it it's always a, a difference between... its Resolution has to do with the inches and the number of pixels in each inch. So I'm going to start from scratch here. And we're going to keep it at screen resolution. So I'm going to actually open from my computer. And I'm going to keep all of this in the video so we understand the difficulty with Photopea. And I'm just going to open up my sketch right into Photopea. Now we know my sketch, even though I scanned it, is not huge. So my sketch, if I look at the image size, without changing it, is 7 inches by 5 inches by 350 dots per inch, right? What I'm going to do so that we're all uniform and understand the processing and size, I'm going to take the smallest dimension and make that 10 inches. But then in, for DPI, the pixels within each inch, I'm going to change that to 72, which is standard screen resolution. And that's actually going to shrink my image. Now, I want my actual image to take up all of that. So I am going to hit Control T to get the transforming box. And I'm going to grow it by holding down Shift so it locks. And Options so it grows from the center. And grow my sketch. Then I'm going to use the crop tool. So this video will be uh, done very quickly so that we can process it. So now I'm going to use the crop tool to get to it. And then I'm going to use my guides. And it's just going to run a